there was a place that I used to go to that had these amazing chocolate iced donuts. They were amazing. Those donuts have not been in that store since the pandemic has started. So there are no donuts. And last night I was downtown and I saw that the Midtown Krispy Kreme had closed. And it, it, it got me to thinking, there's a spot right there that would be great for a car lot, but Sandy Springs is not gonna do it. So I'm out um, about to have some breakfast, looking for a spot for this uh, rental car spot. That's gonna be a lot easier to get set up. I can go ahead and rent that spot, get started and getting cars and pretty quickly with that. Um, one of the things that is really interesting, uh, I did some research, Uber and Lyft are currently having a driver shortage. And uh, I was getting this, getting the oil change on this yesterday and a lady got picked up by an Uber that had a lighted billboard on top of his car. He had like um, racks and there was this lighted billboard advertising for Uber drivers. And I was like, okay, that's different. And so there is a valid um, shortage. Uh, my girl, I dropped off at the airport. She's up in Philly visiting her grandmother. She said that it's really worse up there with Lyft and Uber. It is actually worse up there. And right now, with the second stimulus, Uber drivers can get that additional 300. And I feel that is playing a big role in this. I don't know if they can get state benefits, but that 300 is 1200 bucks per month. It's not a lot of money in my opinion, but when you're looking at an Uber driver um, or a Lyft driver, or Uber Eats or something like that, um, and also, I have a feeling that some people who are not doing Uber and Lyft picking up passengers are doing Uber Eats, they're doing Instacart because these are 1099. So you could still get that unemployment and unemployment will not know that you're working because uh, Instacart, Uber Eats, they don't pay a salary. So I feel that there's a lot of that going on too. And it is just wild. It is just really, really wild what's going on. Because uh, I saw some comments uh, on the video where uh, the, the Uber drivers were staying at home. And um, one, one comment, Erica, like they don't care about exposure, they're being out. And to a degree, I, I believe that is true because people are out. People are out. I mean, I just went to a Waffle House that was packed, literally packed. And I'm about to go to this other spot because um, hopefully there will not be a similar wait. And also this other spot is kind of where I want to look to set up my office. Um, one of the things that is very interesting about this time and you know someone put in um capitalism would fail um partner you don't understand capitalism um we were talking about these government socialist programs and i'm like ford didn't take the bailout so if these other companies had failed car companies that didn't take the bailout these banks have failed that didn't take the bang out the banks that were financially solvent would have taken their market share so capitalism ain't failing it ain't failing at all um some people are bad actors in the economy and essentially i don't really know how this is going to shake out um going forward i mean it is really really wild because 
right now I am looking for commercial real estate and big box commercial real estate is taking it on the chin but small office no 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 um, that activity is rampant I, I looked at a place in Doraville that would have been perfect uh, it recently sold in September for six hundred and six thousand dollars and they're not doing anything and there's a pet boys which is zone automotive in the Sandy Springs which sold for four million dollars and then pet boys is gonna move out of that location so it is very very interesting what's going on with segments of commercial real estate all commercial real estate is not in the toilet I'm here to tell you it, it is not in the toilet since I'm out here looking and essentially uh, I'm, I'm thinking about just going ahead and renting an office for the car business because I don't have to have quote uh, a dealer's license to do that and just kind of wing it and see if they would uh, allow me to get my dealer's license because I got a year to uh, get my dealer's license before I have to take the pre-licensing class again. So essentially, right now, the economy is in a very strange, weird place. Really strange, really weird. Um, I was doing some research on Toro. There's a ton of Teslas on Toro. Um, I've never been in a Tesla. I may just test drive one for fun. But what is going on, what is happening right now is just weird. It's just very, very weird. We're not experiencing, we don't have what we should have going on in terms of the economy. It is super weird. And another thing that has happened during the pandemic, a lot of people got to experience time freedom and they had money coming in. There were some people who didn't have no money coming in. There were some people who were struggling, but this has created a new um, mindset. Like, so this is what it's like to have money coming in and not have to work. And this has created such disharmony. This has created such a um, new mindset. This has created such a new disenfranchise. You know, people are disenfranchised. Uh, this has created a lot of angst because people like, I mean, seriously, um, it was already bad, but now it is cataclysmic with the number of people who do not want to um, go back to work. They don't want to um, do what they need to do in terms of work. They just don't. They, they really, really don't. And this is going to be something that's going to be really, really endemic in our economy going forward you know right now is the first time that many people since they were a kid have actually been able to live actually been able to have money coming in and actually have income and freedom of time and I feel that this is going to start a whole new conversation because uh, I was coming across an article that seriously, 
25, 30% of people after the pandemic plan on quitting their jobs. And I remember I was dating this chick. We used to have the most wonderful conversations. And we were at dinner one night and she's like, since I've been working from home, I don't want to go back to the office. I remember that conversation. Because, you know, for me, I've been working from home for the last 12 years. I don't really know what this office type thing is. I, I have no clue to um, an office or how that works. I have no clue to that. And she said that, you know, it had her rethinking her whole life. Rethinking her whole life. And you've got many, many people who are in that mind space of, I don't want to work a job. I want to work from home. I want to have control. I want to have freedom. I want to. I want to control my life. You have many people who are in that uh, space, that mind space. And I feel for the next five years, this is going to create a serious wave of entrepreneurship. Because these people who are sitting at home who had money coming in, I want you to think, and I talked about this in my live streams during the beginning of the pandemic, that you had folks, I want you to think, when they were getting that additional $600, and if you were in like a state like Seattle, you were getting $50,000 a year unemployment benefits. Actually, yeah, 50000 Because they were getting, actually they were getting more because in Seattle, they were like a thousand a week. So you were getting your four thousand. That was your fifty. And then you were getting this an additional um you're getting like sixty six hundred bucks a month. Sitting at home. Sit at home. You cannot do that to a person. Like one of the things that I saw in my neighborhood growing up. Because a lot of women were married and they had husbands that went to work, brought home money, and the wives didn't work. And I saw all types of calamity for the wives whose husband did not have a life insurance policy. The one there were, I remember one lady, uh, Mrs. Mrs. God, I can't think of her name, but her husband, he went to work. And he had like this $200,000 life insurance policy. That was back in the day, 200K life insurance policy. That was a baller policy. Baller policy. I mean, I mean, we're talking about when you could live on 10,000 a year. When you could live on 10,000 a year. And uh, essentially the house was paid off, I think a year before he died. And then she had this $200,000 policy. And because he worked for a company that had a pension, she got his pension. So she was sitting pretty nice. And there wasn't everyone that who had someone who had that kind of um, forethought. And I remember the women who were married, whose husbands passed on and they didn't have them set up. They caught hell. Because th this is where I'm going with this. You cannot give people $6,600 per month for a prolonged period of time. And this person doesn't get used to that. What's, my, what's one of my favorite sayings? Luxuries tasted become necessities. And you got a whole bunch of people in Washington State who was getting 6600 bucks. Not working. 60 hit, just flowing into their checking account every month. And this takes a mental toll because in my video, you got to be careful how you earn your money. Essentially, once you get addicted or used to or accustomed to making money a certain way, 
it becomes real hard for you to switch it up. It becomes real hard for you to switch it up. And like me, like I'm getting ready to start this car rental, car dealership business. Um, it's going to be a challenge because I have made pure internet money for 12 years. I've not had to really deal with the public. I've not really had to <clears throat> deal with certain issues. Just hadn't had to deal with them. And now I'm opening up where I got to have a customer service person. I've got to hire employees. And, you know, I'm going to do it because based upon the math, I can make more money doing this than I make online in time. About three, three years. It'll take me three, three years to get there. But that's an amazing opportunity. It's an amazing opportunity. So one of the things that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to do a class about this because there are so many people who are doing car rental business and they're buying the car in their name. They're buying the car in their name and the car is not in an LLC. And the income could derive through an LLC. I'm not in the CPA, so I don't know how that works, but essentially all of the cars that I am going to buy are going to be in the LLC's name. Every last one of them. And at some point, I am going to um, start doing credit. Probably like a year into it, I'm going to start doing credit because uh, essentially um, I got one credit card for one company that's uh, going, I've, I've got like literally three credit cards and um, my business credit should be, because I'm going to have two, I'm going to have two forms of business credit. I'm going to have business credit at the holding company level and I'm going to start business credit at the operating company level for Mac Daddy Autos. And it is my intention while I'm sitting on this pile of cash to go ahead and, you know, um, essentially the, the funny story, Wells Fargo suspended the secured business credit card and suspended the secured business credit lines because of the PPP program. That is how many resources that this PPP program has taken that they've actually suspended. And I, I think another reason they didn't have a lot of people taking advantage of these programs. So that's another reason they probably suspended. And they took people who were working in those departments and switched them over to the PPP money. And the PPP money is really interesting because I, because, you know, there was so much fraud with the first PPP programs that now they've become very strict with how they dole it out because they're asking me for stuff I cannot provide and I'm not going to lie or manufacture some stuff so yeah um, it's very interesting it's very very interesting but right now we have a multitude of people who are experiencing who have experienced especially when they were getting out of employment in that additional 600 and what i think the government has unintentionally done is created an environment an expectation where people expect to be taken care of it is a full-fledged expectation now they expect to be taken care of. And this is why, you know, because I got people who want to poo-poo capitalism like, bruh, um, I've, I've been a capitalist since my first company and I've not received any government money. I've been out here hustling. I've been out here finding customers. I've been running ad campaigns. So miss me with that. Capitalism would have failed without the government. Um, there would some companies have failed without the government in absolutely yeah and what would have happened was the companies who didn't need the government they would have absorbed that market space they would have they would have dominated 
You know, Wells Fargo became one of the largest banks during the Great Depression because they were buying up defunct thrifts. So in, in, in any environment, like capitalism is the game that you want to play. And I feel that since there's so many people who are um, in this space, who are in this new paradigm, who are in this crazy, crazy space, who are going to enter into entrepreneurship. They're going to start businesses. They're, you know, because I, 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 I expect to see an explosion in entrepreneurship in the next um, coming five years because there's so many people that had a taste of having money come in and time freedom. I think for many people, this was the first time that they could actually sit and think and contemplate and look and enjoy life. Because essentially when you have to get up and go work a job, and especially a job that you really don't particularly like, but it pays the money that you need to live. And then to go from that to, hey, I'm getting um, $3,800 a month just chilling at home for months to go from that to back to, I gotta go back to this, like, like these Uber drivers. A lot of these Uber drivers, I honestly feel that the reason that a lot of them are not coming back is they're getting unemployment. Because in, I did the research. There is a lack of Uber drivers across the board, across the nation. And the highest place that is showing up is Las Vegas. Uber cannot handle 50% of its calls in Las Vegas. So 50% of the people who try to get an Uber cannot get an Uber in Las Vegas right now. And these people, and also th this kind of brings up this thing. Um, it was already a thing. It was already a thing where people wanted to retire early because this is a mantra in the fire community. Why are you going to work 45 years? You start working at 20, you work for 45 years, you retire at 65. So you, you die at 78 or 80, <clears throat> you get 14 years to chill. And they're like, they don't like that. And I, to a degree, I can understand that. I can understand that because um, essentially the goal would be to retire at 40 and to have 34 years of chilling. Well, once again, I got a video at Savage Finance that talks about that. Instead of trying to retire early, you should try to be doing what you want to do with your life. Because essentially... Um, the storage auction business, I'm not going to say that was a, a retirement because I was working really, really hard, but I'm going to count the YouTube years because <clears throat> my girlfriend cannot believe that I'm 54. I mean, she just doesn't believe it. I have been doing what I wanted to do for the last, um, 12 years. So I started this at 42, okay? And I don't really have a stressful life. I really, really don't. Um, and that's one of the reasons I look the way that I look because I have two Facebook pages and I have one with all my high school friends on and I have another one, this, the main one that I use. And every now and then when I go over to my old Facebook page, and I look at people who I know are younger than me. Life has not been kind to them. Life has not been kind to them. And so I kind of understand the whole retire early and enjoy life. 
I, I get that, understand that. However, the reality is we as human beings were designed to be doing stuff. Just sitting at home not doing anything, that ain't gonna work. A lot of mothers actually kind of go through a period when they, you know, if they're a stay-at-home mom, they have two, three kids, and the kids graduate high school. They kind of go through some stuff because it's like, I, I have no purpose anymore. These little kids, they don't, they're, they're grown. They don't need me. What am I going to do? And a lot of times, I remember I used to work with this chick whose husband was a CEO. Um, he, he traveled a lot. Her kids are grown. She just got a job because she was sitting at home bored. So here was someone who could have been living that life of not working, just at home, doing whatever she wanted to do. And she got a job because she got bored. So once again, you want to create and establish a business where you're doing something with yourself, where you're doing something with yourself. So that's all I got for you. For those of you who want to become corporate citizens, go below and jump into the art of holding. And I want to, you know, because this, this is where all of the details of the car business are going to be there. I'm going to put a lot of behind the scenes stuff, hiring, all of the, all the things I plan on doing. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.